Tiananmen Square Massacre, 1989. Tiananmen Square, in the heart of the Chinese capital, Beijing, has been a place of enormous significance in modern Chinese history. For seven weeks in the spring and early summer of 1989, it was the focus of unparalleled protests by students and workers against the political and economic system, leading to a brutal government crackdown and international condemnation of the communist regime. On April 15, 1989, the spark that ignited the protests was the death of Hu Yaobang, the former chairman and general secretary of the Communist Party of China. Hu was popular among the people of China, as he was seen as being an opponent of corruption and nepotism, and was more democratically minded than many other leading members of the Communist Party of China, being in favor of greater freedom of speech and of the press, a more transparent system, and economic liberalism. His death therefore led to an outpouring of national grief, with small public gatherings arranged as a show of respect and to give people the opportunity to mourn. One of the largest of these gatherings was held at the Monument to the People's Heroes in the center of Tiananmen Square. Students began to join these gatherings in large numbers, seeing them as an opportunity to put pressure on the government to reform aspects of the political and economic system. On April 17th, a group of 500 students marched to the Great Hall of the People to hold a small, informal ceremony of remembrance for Hu Yaobang. The police, fearful that the marchers were intent on causing trouble, dispersed the group. This led to more students joining the gathering in Tiananmen Square, where their leaders produced the List of Seven Demands, their suggestions on how China should be reformed. The following day, a group of students tried to take these demands to the Standing Committee of the Communist Party. They were prevented by a hastily formed police presence and left, frustrated at the lack of an official response. The students tried again, organizing a sit-in outside of the official government residence. On April 20th, the police used batons on the protesters, and when news of the violence filtered back to the students in Tiananmen Square, furious anger erupted. The next day, 100,000 students marched to the square, gathering there before it could be closed off for the funeral of Hu Yaobang, which was due to be held the next day. The students requested to meet Premier Li Peng, but received no response. They therefore organized a two-day strike at the universities. By now, the protests had spread to other Chinese cities as well. The government, which had up until now been hoping that the protests would run out of momentum, decided to act. On April 26th, the state-controlled press went on the attack, accusing the students of plotting civil unrest. This enraged the students, 50,000 of whom took to the streets, demanding that the government retract their accusation. The anger which they felt further galvanized the students to focus their demands, which now encompassed an end to corruption, freedom of the press, and a move towards democracy. In this, they had the support of the workers of Beijing who joined the protests. On May 4th, 100,000 students and workers marched in Beijing to demand meetings between student leaders and the government, as well as an acceleration of political and economic reform. This was rejected by the government, which only agreed to talk to certain members of approved student organizations. The protesters decided to take advantage of the fact that the leader of the USSR, Mikhail Gorbachev, would be arriving in China on May 15th. His visit had generated a huge amount of international interest, meaning that large numbers of foreign journalists were present in China. The protesters knew that this gave them a unique opportunity to put pressure on the government who would want to avoid negative publicity. Therefore, on May 13th, the protesters demanded that the government withdraw the accusations made in the press on April 26th. A significant number of protesters in Tiananmen Square also went on hunger strike, an act which won them the support of many ordinary people who saw the students as being willing to sacrifice themselves for the good of all Chinese people. On May 18th, Premier Li Peng and several of the student leaders met for a televised debate However, rather than having a dialogue, the discussions were confrontational. By now, the government, led by Deng Xiaoping, was desperate to end the protests. On May 19th, General Secretary Zhao Ziyang, who was sympathetic to the demonstrations, went to Tiananmen Square. 
where he made a speech urging the students to end their hunger strike. He was unsuccessful, and a split now emerged among the leadership of the Communist Party. Zhao would then soon be dismissed from his position as general secretary. Some more moderate figures wished to make concessions to appease the protesters and end the tension. Others, such as Li Peng, disagreed regarding the lengthy protests and the idea of being seen to give in as a threat to China's stability. The hardline members who were in control of the armed forces won the debate and support of the paramount leader, Deng Xiaoping, and on May 20th, martial law was declared in Beijing. The military were ordered into the city, but found their way blocked by a mass of protesters. In the face of such mass unrest, the army was ordered to withdraw on May 24th, and the demonstrations continued. During this time, the demonstrators built and rallied around the Goddess of Democracy, a 33-foot-high statue built from foam and paper mache On the evening of June 3rd, the leaders of the Communist Party then decided to bring the protests to an end once and for all. They ordered the People's Liberation Army to move into Beijing. When hostile protesters set buses alight to use as roadblocks to slow the army's progress, the troops fired live ammunition into the crowds. Clashes continued as the PLA attempted to clear the streets, moving up Chang'an Avenue towards the square using tear gas, small arms fire, armored personnel carriers, and tanks. As injured civilians were taken to the hospital by rickshaw drivers who braved rifle fire to pluck them out of what was rapidly becoming a battle zone, the army pushed the protesters back to Tiananmen Square and now sought to end the protests by forcing the remaining demonstrators to leave the square. Soldiers fired their assault rifles into the crowd of protesters who remained as the APCs advanced towards the square, running over the crowd and barricades, crushing them. Protesters who attempted to take shelter from the assault in buses were hauled out and beaten, and students who tried to leave the square peacefully also came under attack. Soldiers were also attacked in turn by protesters with rocks and Molotov cocktails, or were simply dragged from their vehicles and beaten to death. Tanks arrived in the square between 4 and 5 a.m. on the morning of June 4th, and the square was completely cleared of protesters by 5.40 a.m. Despite the presence of a large number of foreign journalists in Beijing, this crackdown was difficult to capture on film, as the government had ordered foreign networks to stop broadcasting from the city as military action became more likely. Those that captured footage in the heart of the crackdown risked being attacked or killed themselves and rushed to smuggle it out for the world to see. One infamous piece of footage that was captured was the standoff between a sole protester, known as Tank Man, and a column of tanks returning to Tiananmen Square the next day, on June 5th, which immediately made headlines around the world. Those government officials who had sympathized with the protesters were purged from the party and placed under house arrest. Members of the state media who had expressed support for the protesters were also removed from their positions. The events in Tiananmen Square also led to increased censorship as the government sought to hide the truth of what had happened from the Chinese people. The Chinese government faced international condemnation for the crackdown. The shock of the violent government response to the protests meant that the government quickly regained control. Student leaders were arrested and were sent to prison, with student leader Wang Dan sentenced to seven years. Some other student leaders were able to flee the country, and many students and their sympathetic professors were punished by being blacklisted, making it hard to get employment. Workers who participated in the protests were treated more harshly, with those caught being quickly executed. Estimates of the number killed vary greatly. The official Chinese government figure of 241 fatalities is widely thought to be false, with other estimates of the number killed ranging from 800 to 10,000. <laughs>